Hello and welcome to Run Testers, my name's Nick and this is our review of the Kiprun GPS 900 watch from Decathlon. The GPS 900 is the second watch in Decathlon's Kiprun range that has come about through their partnership with Coros. So the GPS 500 was the first watch that was built on the base of the original Coros Pace watch. And then the GPS 900 is built on the base of the original Coros Apex watch. So it is a full multi-sport watch. It uses the Coros platform. So the software and the app you link with on your phone is all designed by Coros. Um, but it's just got a few little updates. It's got a different processor and the bezel has been changed to aluminium. But overall, you're getting a very similar experience there just with quite a few of the software updates that Coros has brought to its range in general since the launch of the original Coros Apex. It's a very good value watch, and that's going to be a key part of this review. It costs £199.99 in the UK, and it's a cent under €250 Euros in Europe. Now, the original Apex came in 46 and 42 millimeter sizes. This is the 46 millimeter watch, and then you've got a 1.2 inch memory and pixel display. The watch weighs in at 58 grams overall, and it hasn't got a touchscreen like some of the newer models in Coros's range, including the new Coros Apex 2 models. You've got two buttons on the side, and one of which is also a dial that you can use to scroll through the menus on the watch. Watch. The user interface is exactly as you'd find it on Coros watches and you've got to access to the same vast amount of different watch faces you can get for Coros watches. I've got a Kipchoge one on at the moment on the watch. You've got a heart rate monitor, you've got a barometric altimeter and five ATM water resistance. There's missing a couple of the slightly newer sensors that are quite standard on sports watches now like a pulse oximeter and it won't take any kind of ECG measurements. And it doesn't have multi-band GPS, but it is able to link up to multiple satellite systems at once. So for example, at the moment, I've got it set to use GPS, GLONASS, Galileo, and QZSS all at once. So it's not a complete all systems on mode, which you can get on some Chorus watches. And it's not multi-band, which you do get on Chorus's most expensive watches, but it is still using four satellite systems at once. You've also got breadcrumb navigation on the watch and a back to start feature that will guide you back to the start of your run. And the battery life, as you'd expect from a watch based on the Chorus platform, is very good. You've got 35 hours of GPS tracking and up to 30 days of general use of the watch and in, there is a power saving ultra max mode that can take your sports tracking up to 80 hours. You can link up external sensors to the watch using Bluetooth but there's no ANT plus support on the watch and like I say it's all linked up to the Coros app where you can create structured workouts and you also get the EvoLab training analysis from Coros so, which is then also shown through widgets on the watch. So that EvoLab training analysis is quite in depth it will give you things like uh, your training load analysis, predicted race times, your recovery time, all that kind of stuff. You've got a silicon strap that comes with the watch that you can change your out tools using the little quick release thing that's a bit fiddly but does work uh, and then there's not a whole load of smart features on this watch but you do get uh, notifications from your phone as well as sunrise and sunset times in your area. When you factor in price I think the design of the GPS 900 is pretty on point. Yes Overall, it's a little bit plasticky, but that makes it nice and light. And I think for under £200, it feels compact, it feels light, and it feels pretty well built. It's comfortable on the wrist mainly to wear. The straps are not my favourite, but those are interchangeable, so you can change them out for nylon straps if you prefer that, which I personally do. The screen is pretty standard fare in many ways. Yes, it's not the brightest, but I think it does a good job. I found it visible in most lights. It's not like an AMOLED sort of super bright, sharp screen that we've seen come on some of the Garmin's lately, but it does a job. And again, you know, it's one of those things does enough for me. The other thing, obviously, there's no touch screen here, but personally, I tend to be more kind of buttons and uh, crown control anyway. I much prefer the way that way for sort of controlling my watches. I'm a really big sweater, so particularly during runs or immediately afterwards, trying to use touch screens kind of is a big fail for me. The screen gets sweaty and I find them hard to control. So I, I tend to just use the buttons anyway. If you like the touch screen, then maybe you'll find that I miss here, but I don't. When it comes to the interface, I find it responsive enough. It's quick enough on the buttons. The button press is nice and responsive, reactive. It's mainly kind of intuitive. It's a pretty standard sort of Coros fare here. If you like the way Coros watches are set up, you're going to like what this one does because it's exactly the same. And yeah, you've got the classic Coros controls here with this crown. The crown works nicely, though I think at times, sometimes I'm not a big fan of the scrolly scrolly to kind of even just to unlock the watch, particularly at the end of a run or you want to see your stats and interact with a watch during a run. I know that's there obviously to protect you from kind of hitting buttons on the move, but I just prefer a button tap to unlock. But overall on design, pretty no frills, but I think actually for under £200, it's fairly nice looking and it will do a job. So I like the design of the GPS 900. It's um, 
very comfortable to wear at all times and it sits nice and close to the wrist. I think it's a pretty good looking watch, especially given the price point and it's not quite as hard wearing and rugged as the watches in Corus's range that use titanium features and things like that. It's good enough for me as a fairly unadventurous person. One thing I would say is that I get very close to the last loop on the strap. So if you do have quite thin wrists, you might need to change that out for a slightly smaller strap because um, yeah, I get pretty close to the end, especially when tightening up for the run. Screen isn't the most vivid or bright. This is sometimes a criticism we have of Chorus watches in general. Like that's one of the reasons the battery life is so good that it's not the most vibrant screen, but when you are outside, it is nice and clear and easy to read. You can put up to six stats on a page during a run and it's quite easy to see all of those at a glance. So yeah, no real concerns with the screen. It's not as vibrant and bright as some of the stuff you are seeing out there, like the AMOLED screens on some Garmin's, but it does the job. So overall, I do think it's better looking than most of the other watches you're gonna find in this price range, just because it's got that metal bezel, whereas pretty much everything else you'll see on the market under 200 pounds is a all plastic watch usually. So yeah, it's a nice design and good for its price. So the GPS accuracy on the watch is uh, its not outstanding, it's not great, but it's not terrible. It's, it's pretty much what you'd expect from this almost previous generation of GPS software. Like it has got those multiple satellite systems, but it's not using multiband services, that kind of thing. And, and that just means it's not gonna hit the standards of what you can get from some GPS watches these days, notably Garmin's watches with multiband that are just really precise. So if you're running on things like lapped courses, doing loops, you're gonna get three different loops instead of loops that all sit on top of one another, which you would get with multiband GPS. And it's gonna cut a few more corners and run wide a bit more and not have you on exactly the right side of the street. So I talked about this a little bit in the race Fit I did uh, the uh, Southern Relays where I wore the GPS 900 and the 4Runner 265 and it's you can see the difference there but the GPS track's not going to be as good but at the same time I have found that this watch overall on distance and pacing has been usable it's been pretty good overall so it's more or less lines up on distance with multiband watches the lap alerts aren't too far out even when running hard and that's the key thing like can you use a watch to pace hard workouts and races uh, and you can with this watch it's pretty good you are going to get more errors than on some watches but Unless you're really obsessive about it like myself, I think this would probably tick the box on GPS accuracy for you. It's just not quite as good as what you can get from other watches these days. When it comes to GPS, I put the GPS 900 mainly up against a Garmin Enduro 2. I did it on a number of kind of sort of urban runs actually in downtown Dubai, lots of skyscrapers, kind of quite a tricky sort of setup for, for GPS to work. I also took it into the desert out there and did a 20 mile run where I had big open skies and test it up against that. And what I found was that the Kiprun GPS 900 had a tendency to read slightly longer than the Garmin Enduro across all of those runs. Though we're talking about margins here and it's well within the kind of margin for error that you might find between watches being worn on different wrists when you're looking for GPS. So there was nothing really kind of crazy wrong here, no big problems that I noticed with it up against a much more expensive watch in the Garmin Enduro 2. Now, when you get into the nitty gritty of looking at the GPS traces on the maps, you can see that the GPS 900 struggled in the built-up areas to track me exactly on the paths that I was running. It sometimes put me in the Dubai Marina. It sometimes had me running through some of the massive skyscrapers that are out in Dubai. It wasn't actually bang on correct. But then again, if you look at the same was true of the Enduro 2. The Enduro 2, I think, was kind of mainly better. It was more accurate. It was more kind of pinned to the routes that I was running. But neither of them was perfect. And again, for under £200, I think you're going to expect a little bit of that kind of performance from the GPS 900. It wasn't something that I thought it was so bad that it would stop me buying this watch. And then when it came to that kind of wide open desert run, the GPS 900 matched the Enduro 2 almost bang on on the tracks and in terms of the overall distance. So when you're in those bigger wide open spaces, you know, where you've got uh, more kind of clear skies, then the GPS 900 had a really solid performance. So also good there. Heart rate performance then, and again, I test this mainly against the optical heart rate on the Garmin Enduro 2, obviously a much more expensive watch. I also put it up against a Polar H10 chest strap. And essentially what I found is that the GPS 900, it did have some struggles. It did that thing classically in the beginning of a run where it shot very high and often it would stay very high. Almost for a quarter of my run, it was reading me at heart rates, which were way, way higher than what I was running. So some problems there. And that may well be down to it kind of locking onto cadence, or I don't know, it happens sometimes with the optical heart rate sensors. Once they, they go high and they stay high and it takes them a little while to settle down. This was a little bit longer than I would find kind of with some other watches, but once it settled, actually, or once it sort of, it seemed to match then the Enduro quite nicely. It wasn't exactly, it was a little bit more spiky and droppy than this kind of smoother Enduro 2's optical heart rate. Same again, it was a bit more kind of spiky and droppy than I found with a H10, but it wasn't a million miles away. But overall, I think my takeaway from this, if you're looking for sort of super accurate optical heart rate or the most accurate optical heart rate you're gonna get, it's not on this watch. It was a little bit flaky. It's not gonna be 100% reliable, but there's a thing. 
this watch is cheap enough that you could add on a reliable chest strap and it wouldn't really take that price even up to some of the kind of mid-range watches. So there's an argument to say that you can bring that kind of better data just by adding in a chest strap. The heart rate accuracy hasn't been that great for me with the watch, I will say. Like, I think after about four, five or six runs, I started to pair a, a chest strap to the watch just because I wanted to get more accurate data going into the training and analysis stuff on the watch and test that out a bit better. But yeah, it's probably slightly below par for what I'd expect from optical heart rate monitors. I don't have very high expectations of optical heart rate monitors in general, just because it's a tricky position to read when you're running at your heart rate because your arm's moving around a lot. But this wasn't great at all. Like I had several runs where it was reading just completely the wrong zone and that skews all your training analysis and makes it hard to use it to judge the effort on your run as well if you are running by heart rate. So I would pair an external strap to this. You can do that via Bluetooth, uh, not ANT Plus. But if you have a Bluetooth um, heart rate strap, it pairs very easily to the watch. I'd say it's probably been slightly worse than a few other watches I've been testing lately, but overall the net result is the same is that I would pair an external strap to all those watches just because I've yet to find a really very very accurate optical heart rate monitor for the wrist. So the battery life on the watch is outstanding as it often is with Chorus watches. Uh, it lasted me 13-14 days on a charge and that included 15 hours of GPS activities along with tracking some indoor workouts as well and notifications coming in with the vibration alert set on. Like It's actually got a very handy battery breakdown on the watch. You can see when you last charged it and what's been using the battery since then and it's just, it's just a really strong feature for this watch. You are going to get for a couple of weeks of training, maybe slightly less if you're a triathlete using it for everything. But overall, it's a really impressive watch on the battery life front. Part of that is just because of the way the watch is set up. Like I say, the screen isn't the brightest. It isn't set up to track your heart rate continuously 24-7 just during workouts, but you can turn that on, but that will reduce the battery life a little bit. And it's, it's doing a little bit less during things like sleep and that kind of thing, which does reduce the battery life on other watches. You're not going to get a load of heart rate variability analysis and that kind of thing on this watch. So that means it's a little bit less power intensive. But in many ways, overall, that's a good thing because you know, a lot of watches are trading off battery life for some of these features, and especially features like AMOLED screens these days. The GPS 900 sticks more to the basics and as a result you get a very long battery life out of it at a very good price point. So yeah, it's definitely a strong feature on the watch. Battery life on the Kiprun GPS 900 is really competitive for the amount you're going to pay for it again. So this is something that Coros does really well. You probably make sacrifices in terms of the overall screen brightness, potentially maybe a little bit on the GPS accuracy, but you know that's up for grabs. But in my tests, I've, I felt like it lived up pretty much to that kind of 30 hour battery life in full GPS mode. So a two hour run for me burnt around 5% battery life. The overnight battery burn, which can be bad on some watches, Polar suffer this particularly, was pretty good on this. It was like one to 2%, that's great. You don't wanna be waking up in the morning and seeing sort of 10% or more of your battery is gone just because you're tracking sleep overnight. So the performance is really solid here. And then when you're kind of factoring in how often you're gonna charge this, I reckon looking at my usage, which has been, is quite heavy, you know, for a week, I think you're probably gonna have to charge this every fortnight, really, if you're training, you know, four or five times a week, and one of those is a much longer two or three hour session. But that's not too bad, really, in terms of the overall kind of charging frequency. That's a kind of, that's happy again for the price. I think that's really, really competitive. On training analysis then, I think what you're getting here is a decent kind of broad selection of the core kind of training and performance and recovery stats that you'll now find on most kind of running watches at this level. So you're talking about things like recovery time recommendations, you're talking about uh, load estimation of your overall training. Obviously you've got, with Coros, you have this kind of fatigue metric. Essentially what fatigue is doing is looking at the difference between your load impact and your base fitness measurement that you get on here and seeing how well you're sort of coping what the differences between those two stats and saying your overall fatigue. And overall here, you've got more than enough to cater, I think, for most runners' needs. Now, the second part of this puzzle though is how accurate it is and how useful they are. I do wonder about these metrics on pretty much every brand of watch about how reliable they are. I sort of tend to think they're better for benchmarking. But with this in particular, if you're relying on the optical heart rate to feed the data, which it, you know it's all based on heart rate data mainly. And if that optical heart rate data is out, if you've got a run like I mentioned, which has got 25% of it where the heart rate is skewed high, a lot of those readings are gonna be incorrect. So if you're judging your training seriously based on that, I think you're gonna be doing yourself a disservice in some places. Now I'll give you an example of that. I traveled to Dubai recently and the recovery time recommendations I thought were really bad at picking up poor sleep, the kind of jet lag fatigue that I had from travel. Um, and also I've since then I've come back with a cold and illness. Today it says that I'm really 100% ready to go and train. I am not. On the day that I first arrived in Dubai, I'd had one hour sleep on the plane <laughs> on the way over. And that we arrived in the morning, 6 a.m. and it still thought, I was in a good position to go and train. I, told, I wasn't, I was asleep in bed at five o'clock that evening and I was broken. I wouldn't have liked to have run that day at all. 
And so some of these things, I think, they're not quite on point. And I think you've got to take them slightly with a pinch of salt. It's not something that I personally would be buying this watch for. Now that said, there's one thing that I really do like, and that is the four week load distribution screen, which it gives you kind of an at a glance view of where you've been spending most of your training time at an intensity level broken down into kind of three areas. This gives you a, you know, a rough window or rough idea of whether or not you're hitting the right in levels of intensity and you're getting your kind of your training spread correctly based on harder work and, and lighter lighter work. So that I think that at a glance is quite useful just to see overall in that four week period whether or not you're kind of managing those intensities well. So I like that. Chorus is very democratic with this EvoLab training analysis in that any watch in its range of access to the app gets you know quite a high degree of information about their training whereas if you look at Garmin's range for example you get different levels of training analysis as you pay more or less across the range so the Kipron GPS 900 just tags into that and you get really you know a pretty comprehensive look at your training through the EvoLab system there's some bits are not that intuitive like the marathon level and your running performance on any given run aren't the most intuitive things to understand or at least they're not the most useful to me anyway i find that you know it's nice to see your overall marathon level but probably you'll look at other measures within the app things like vo2 max or threshold pace those kind of estimations they give you but then there is you know, the general training load measured against fatigue that kind of thing there's race predictions which probably a little bit more accurate for me than I get from Garmin, although they're quite, maybe a little bit optimistic on the Chorus ones actually, so maybe that's why I like them, uh, because they're quite optimistic. But overall, they're pretty pretty close to the mark race predictions. You get paces as well, which is quite a nice little touch. The recovery uh, timer, I think, is uh, again, very optimistic. And if I was judging my efforts by that, I think I'd be running way too much. So that's something to look at, I think, a little bit, because I was finishing hard workouts, really hard workouts, with a chest strap on, so it was getting accurate information in, and it was telling me, you'll be ready for hard training in four hours, that kind of thing. So that's something to maybe take a little bit of a pinch of salt. Don't immediately dash out after a hard workout just because your watch says you're recovered. But overall, the training analysis on the watch, I think is really quite good, especially at this price point. And I really do like that you can glance at the key stuff on the watch with color-coded sections, see things like your overall balance of hard, easy, and medium training, and that kind of thing. It's all pretty clear and easily accessed on the watch. And then you can get a little bit more detail in the app with graphs that plot things over time, though they're not the most um, elegant things in the app. I think it's slightly better on that front if you go to the website rather than trying to use the graphs on the app. But yeah, certainly I think the training analysis is a good strong feature on the watch and it's something that is quite usable and a nice way to track your fitness over time. Uh, and it can be quite helpful in just making you back off a little bit if you start to see the balance of your training going the wrong way and the color-coded fatigue graph you know veering into the red sections so activity and sleep tracking are probably slight afterthoughts on this watch i think it's fair to say you get all the usual activity tracking stats they're all there things like steps and active calories and that kind of thing and then it will track your sleep stages but it's not really something that's front and center on the watch and all of that stuff that you get on the watch isn't feeding into the training analysis certainly so i don't tend to really care that much about my sleep unless it's feeding into training analysis on the watch and things like Garmin watches will feed into the training readiness stat, that kind of thing. So I did take this off quite a lot of the time, but you do get your sleep graph on the watch if you are interested in looking at that. And you are certainly getting all the key bases covered in terms of your daily activity. It's just, it's a separate thing to the other part of the watch. Where I do think companies progressing on this front is having is working out how all that daily activity feeds into your training load analysis and taking a more holistic view of that. So on Garmin's, for example, you'll get your recovery time will drop faster if you're having a very restful day, that kind of thing. So. Uh, I'd like to see a bit more of that going forward, of course, as Evo Lab system in general. But if you want the basics of activity and sleep tracking, it's all there on the watch and easy to use. A couple of observations for me on the activity and sleep tracking then. Activity tracking does your usual kind of stuff, steps, all of that kind of business. It often read far, far lower than the Garmin Enduro 2, which was the thing that I was putting up against. Like from right now, for instance, we're halfway through a Sunday. Garmin's got me just short of 5,000 steps and the decathlon kip run GPS 900 has me at 2,700, so you know it's it's kind of almost half. The other thing is when it comes to sleep tracking, I just wouldn't trust this. I don't really trust any of the watches to track sleep effectively, to be honest. Garmin and Coros and Polar, they can all put you asleep at different times. I don't think, you know, when they try and break it down and do that kind of granular sleep stage tracking, I just don't think they managed to do that with any kind of accuracy. Again, give you an example. Last night, I'm sat on the sofa at eight o'clock, the Kipron GPS 900 thought I was asleep, had me asleep from eight o'clock. I didn't actually go to bed until 10 o'clock after I'd watched Everton lose on match of the day. <sighs> so yeah, if you're looking to buy this for sleep tracking accuracy, I don't think that's a great idea, but then I don't think this is any worse particularly than most of the other watches out there. So it's not, again, it's, it's not a reason I would buy it, but it's also not a reason that I would bet against it, so.
So this is a really very good watch, I'd say, and it's probably the best watch available for under £200. When you're looking at the RRP of watches, it's a very similar experience to the Coros Pace 2, but I think you get a slightly nicer design with this metal bezel. Although some people might prefer the dinky plastic design of the Pace 2, which is an exceptionally lightweight watch. And it's, I really like the way it looks and feels on the wrist. But considering what you're getting here in terms of materials, the fact it's a full multi-sport watch with proper triathlon mode and all that for under £200, it's really exceptional value. This kind of watch, I think, really shows off where Coros was so strong on the market, which was coming in with cheaper watches than many of their rivals that use good materials and offered loads of features at a lower price, along with big battery life. I'm not sure that's entirely how I feel about their current Apex 2 watches, for example. I think I prefer this to the Apex 2 range. Like, you do get better materials on those watches and a few extra features, including multi-band GPS, but I didn't find the GPS that accurate when I was using the Apex 2 models. And the things like the maps and music features on those watches just aren't very developed and don't work very well. Like it, there's not no connection to streaming services and the maps don't have turn by turn directions and all that kind of thing. So if you're looking at upgrading for those features, then you're best served by going to the Garmin and looking at things like the 965, 955, which have all those features and a much better user interface. But then when you are talking about Garmin, I don't think there's a watch that directly rivals the uh, GPS 900 for under 200 pounds. Like you can get very good Garmin's for that price, but you're looking at lighter plastic watches that are usually just running watches. And while the user interface is probably better Better, I think than on uh, the GPS 900 and Coros watches and your experience is very good with Garmin's obviously. This is offering an awful lot in terms of features uh, for its price point. Like things like breadcrumb navigation, again, you're not really seeing that in Garmin's at this price. So there's a lot of features available. They all work really well and it's a good looking watch and that's a very good package for £200. The whole package overall is a little bit you know, last gen for watches, I guess it's fair to say. It's missing a lot of the features that have come to watches lately, but a lot of those are nice features, but not necessarily essential. Like, I love multiband GPS. I consider that essential, but a lot of people won't. But then the other things like the watches are doing, like AMOLED screens and heart rate variability analysis, all this stuff, which I do think makes for a better sports watch overall, is not essential feature. And in, I, what's great about those features cropping up on expensive watches these days is that then cheaper watches just become incredibly good all-round sports watches that nail the essentials and do a really good job of that, and they cost a lot less. And this is a classic example of that. Like, it really does do an awful lot. In fact, it's not just the essentials, because it's throwing in things like breadcrumb navigation and a nice design and massive battery life, as well as doing all the essentials you need with pretty good training analysis as well. So, yeah, I really like this watch. It's a great watch. Like, um, personally, I do really like an AMOLED screen, and I do like multiband GPS, but you have to pay a lot more for that. And if you are looking for value on the market, this is certainly a really good option if you want a watch that just looks that little bit more sleek and nice for general use and didn't want to and don't really want to go for an all plastic watch overall i was a big fan of the gps 900 i think it will serve a lot of runners very well indeed and in terms of value it's hard to argue with this and the chorus pace too it's just truly outstanding options on the market if you're not looking for all those kind of modern frills that are cropping up on sports watches these days the verdict then for me well i think the kip run gps 900 represents pretty good value for money it's obviously fairly no frills but i think there's a solid simplicity to it it's not the prettiest watch it's not the ugliest either it manages to avoid the kind of pitfall of some cheaper watches of feeling really cheap and plasticky it's actually quite nice and light on the wrist and overall i think it's functional with a really good competitive battery life it's got pretty reliable gps you know it's got okay optical heart rate but when is optical heart rate really ever that great there's a broad range of training performance and recovery insights that i think will suit most runners or cater for most runners needs without being kind of too over complicated some of the language perhaps around that I mean, the coros uses which obviously uh, decathlon and kipron have, have got in here because this is partnered by coros can be a little bit complicated to understand is it the most reliable probably not but it'll do a job it's in terms of kind of benchmarking and maybe just sort of seeing progress it's okay it, it's not going to be that much worse than some of the other watches out there i think some may miss the touch screen the music some of the other smarts that you might get you know if you're looking for things like mobile payments you're not going to get that here and although I've enjoyed using it. It's been a really kind of simple tool to use. It's been fairly effective of what I've needed it to do for simple running, simple training. For me personally, I still think that I would invest my money in a Coros Pace 2. It's cheaper for a start, does much the same thing. Don't think you're sort of changing too much on the overall build quality or the experience that you're gonna get on the Pace 2. So I would go for the cheaper Pace 2. And then if your budget can stretch to it, I think there's a really good argument maybe to upgrade yourself a little bit further and go for something like the Garmin 4 under 255 with music, obviously gonna get the offline music playback with that. And I just think it's a, all round a slightly more competent and comprehensive watch and Garmin's platform probably overall beats uh, the Coros experience. And uh, in terms of the, the kind of whole suite of training performance, recovery, 
you know, breathing, stress, all those kind of tools, the general kind of health and fitness and wellness, that rounded piece is probably stronger on the Forerunner series than it is here. So again, I think, you know, I think plenty of people, if you've got 200 pounds to spend and that's it, this is not gonna be a terrible watch. Check out the Pace 2 for comparisons to that. If you can upgrade, maybe go a little bit higher. But if you bought this, I don't think you would be disappointed in it. I think it does represent good value for money. So the other watch to compare the GPS 900 to is obviously the GPS 500, which is the other Kipran watch based on a Chorus platform within the Decathlon range. It's, it's a fair bit cheaper. It's £130 in the UK and €140. Euros. Now, there are several upgrades on the GPS 900 compared to the 500, but you are still getting a very good multi-sport triathlon watch here. It does all the basics very well, so it's going to basically judge whether the upgrades are worth it for you. Design is obviously a big upgrade, I think, on the uh, GPS 900. You've got the metal bezel. It's a watch that's actually slightly smaller in terms of case size, but it is a little bit heavier than the uh, GPS 500, which is an all-plastic design. But the 900 uh, is just a nice looking watch all round I'd say. You've got the different buttons set up as well. You've got four buttons on the uh, 500 and two buttons, one of which being the dial on the 900. It's a bit of a wash for me. You get used to either one. They both work quite well, but the overall design is more elegant on the GPS 900, I'd say. The GPS 900 has a barometric altimeter, which the GPS 500 does not. The navigation features on the 900, things like the breadcrumb trails and the back star feature, they're not available on the cheaper watch. And it also has more sports modes, the GPS 900, including indoor bike and hike modes. So that will obviously be important to some people. Battery life's a little bit longer on the GPS 900 as well. It's 35 hours versus 25 hours of GPS tracking on the GPS 500, they both say that they'll last up to 30 days with general use. That is a roll call of quite useful upgrades for sure. Whether the price is probably pitched quite well at, to really make it a hard decision whether you want those upgrades or not. You can just get a very good multi sport watch here with the GPS 500. It has access to Corus's Evo Lab training analysis. It's got the same GPS accuracy, the same size screen. It is a very good tracker uh, for, and it is a fair bit cheaper than the GPS 900. However, I do think the more expensive watch is a much nicer one to wear all the time. If you're looking for a, a watch that you are gonna wear all the time as well as a sports watch, the 900 I think is a much more elegant option that is more enjoyable to wear all the time. But if you are just looking for a pure sports watch, then you can probably get by with the GPS 500 if you're not gonna miss things like the altimeter, the navigation, and that little bit of extra battery life you get on the price of your watch. So that's our review of the Kipron GPS 900 from Decathlon. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Are you excited to try this watch out? Would you ever leave Garmin for a watch like this? Do let us know in the comments below. Like, subscribe, ring the little bell, and we'll see you next time.